Hi. I have had a lot of students that have had trouble uh, with improvising. And um, like they understand, you know, if you're in this key, you use this scale. And then they just kind of noodle around on that scale and they're not really getting it as music. They're just sort of noodling around on some scale in the right key. Uh, so I always try to break it down to you really need to know the notes that go with the chords that you're playing. Okay. So to make it really easy, we'll um, just take an E major chord. So. Okay, so if you're just playing over an E major chord, of course, you would just use the E major scale. You know, um, that's a scale that you could use, and it would sound fine. Okay, but you want to know what the intervals are. So then it starts to become this, like, really daunting task where, um, okay, so you know the notes on the neck, which hopefully you all do. If you don't, go and start memorizing them. Um, you know the notes on the neck, so you know where all the E's are. Okay, that's great. Now, the uh, major third of um, that key, of the you know, chord, the scale, whatever, um, is a G sharp. So now you need to know where all the G sharps are, and that those are the major thirds. Then the fifth is the B, so you need to know where all the B's are, and that the B is the fifth. Uh, then you have to know, you know that the A is the fourth, uh, that the F sharp is the second, that the D sharp is the you know seventh, the major seventh, you know all of these things, where all they, they all are and what interval they are. So I really like um, utilizing a you know more sort of bang for your buck kind of um, approach. So what I do is I take the root note, learn the intervals in relation to that root note, okay? Of course, I know what the notes are, but to get things jump-started, it's I think it's more bang for the buck if you know what the intervals are in relation to that root note. So it's sort of like, uh, you know, a one, four, five, two chord progression or something. If you do it in different keys, it's the same one, four, five, two chord progression, but all the chords, of course, have changed depending on what key you're in. So if we're in E major, okay, so if this is the E, okay, so I have the seventh fret on the A string, okay, as the E root, okay. If I play, maybe if I play it like this, you'll, you can see it a little easier on the, um, on the video here. Okay, so then the second, so that's of course the major second, okay? So if we have the E on the seventh fret of the A string, the major second, you could play on the ninth fret of the A string. The major third interval would be on the sixth fret of the D string. The fourth interval, perfect fourth, would be the seventh fret of the D string. The fifth, you could play on the um, ninth fret of the D string, okay, or the seventh fret of the A string, okay, either. The major sixth is the ninth fret of the E string. The major seventh is the sixth fret of the A string. And then the seventh fret of the A string right back to the root again. Okay, so we end up with root, second, third, and they're all major or perfect intervals because we're in E major. So root, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, root again. Okay? Or, you know, if you put the fifth down to there, whatever. Okay? So what this does is it gives you the root note here, okay, and then going one fret backwards or two frets up and on two adjacent strings, so that little like rectangle of real estate gives you all the intervals for all of the notes in the key of E major. Okay? So if you memorize that little bit, okay, and then we move, say, the E 
to this E here, so the 14th fret of the D string. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so that's the intervals again. If we move it to, say, the ninth fret of the G, okay, now the top two strings are off a fret, okay, they're tuned a fret lower than the pattern, you know, goes starting on the thicker string, so they're tuned one fret lower, so you need to play everything one fret higher, okay, so it's still the exact same pattern, though, you just have to shift, um, in this case, we're only going to use the B string, so, and then instead of there, which is where we were with the other pattern, it's now there would be the third, the major third. Okay, so the lower string stays the same little pattern. Okay, so we end up with the E there, or there, if we went to this E here, so in this case I'm on the B string, so when I go down to the G, I need to move that little pattern one fret lower because the top two strings are one fret higher. So it's just that sort of like little, you know, sort of little, you know, jig in the um, tuning of the guitar. So hopefully that makes sense. So then all you need to know is just all the E root notes, and then you have all the intervals with that little pattern. So, if you were to, say, you know, take the guitar neck and mark off all of the E's and then mark off all of those little patterns all the way up and down the neck, you would end up with every single possible note you could play for the key of E major, okay? And, since you know that little pattern, very simple little, you know, rectangular block of guitar real estate, you know what all of the intervals are all up and down the neck without necessarily needing to know all the seven notes of E major and what each note is in relation to the root note, the interval, you know, that it is from the root note. You don't need to know any of that. You just need to know that little, you know, block. And use it up and down the neck to improvise. And then, of course, you know, if you want to say do it in G, you know, or whatever. Okay, so use this G. It's the exact same pattern, the exact same intervals. That note there is still the major second, that note's the major third, that note's the perfect fourth, perfect fifth, major sixth, major seventh, and we're back to the root again. So it's the exact same interval. So if you're playing and you're like, oh, I want to do, you know, something that's, uh, you know. Okay, if we're in E major, <coughs> E major, excuse me. It's the exact same little pattern. I played it wrong. wherever, it's the exact same intervals, the exact same pattern for your fingers and everything. So I think that's a great way to learn how to improvise on the guitar using a very simple little pattern that you can now start to use the notes actually as intervals rather than just kind of playing up and down the E major scale in sort of random patterns and, you know, kind of crossing your fingers and hoping that some of the intervals line up nicely with some of the chords and all of that stuff. Um, so hopefully this uh, helps somebody and, uh, you know, 
check out my other videos and subscribe and share and do all of that stuff. I always forget to add all that stuff into these videos. Darn it. So I added into this one. But hopefully this helps. So enjoy. Rock on.